Well, we are just into the third day of the campaign to recall Liberal Cabinet Minister Ida Chong, and already this thing is getting messy. Allegations of dirty tricks on both sides, claims of intimidation, pressuring people to sign or not to sign the recall petition. And all this as police are investigating a break-in at Chong's campaign office. A News reporter Stephen Andrew has the story. We're here to ask you to give you the opportunity to sign the petition to recall Ida Chong. It's getting ugly. First, accusations recall canvases are being followed by Ida Chong supporters in dark clothing as they try to gather signatures. There has been one instance where an uh, observer has been there and has actually actively become involved in a conversation between a canvasser and a person who appears interested in signing. Over at the Pro Chong campaign, workers say they too are getting calls. Uh, we've heard rumblings from um, some particularly elderly people that feel a little intimidated by the people coming to the door. And then there's this, a window at Chong's campaign headquarters, pried open, but nothing missing. We can't draw any uh, conclusion as of yet. This investigation still is ongoing, and we are processing uh, the evidence that's been collected, but uh, there's nothing obvious as of yet. Broken campaign office windows? I'm sure it's just a vandal trying to get in a building, looking for something that they can sell or use. Mm -hmm. Allegations of men in black lurking as people sign the petition? For some reason, they seem to be choosing to wear very dark clothing. I don't know if there's anything to that or not. Not exactly finger-pointing, leading to a scandal on the scale of Watergate, but both sides are jittery. Elections BC says it has received calls of concern, but so far, no complaints and no evidence anyone is breaking BC's recall law. But both sides are looking to score political points. Today, the Chong campaign is capitalizing on threats to acting chief electoral officer Craig James. We're letting people know that, that if you sign the petition, this is not anonymous. So they need to know that. But recall proponents say that's not entirely true. The canvases are on the street or at the door. They're encouraging people to tick this box on the side of the petition that blocks anyone from seeing the telephone number and the address of the person signing the petition. Still, says Chong's campaign, anyone can use the names for political gain, but they're not saying how. That is not deterring the steady number of people at the recall office from signing the petition. And the campaign says it will reveal Monday how many have so far signed on to recall Ida Chong. In Gordon Head, Stephen Andrew, A News.